us more. This world and in the hereafter, O oh God, accept our prayers. Amen. From east and west, north to south, you have come. Please take your seats. Once again, welcome. And you'll agree with me that this Macquarie University band is nothing but an incredible bunch of young people. Exactly what Macquarie is known for. Indeed, a Macquarie way. They deserve a wide dollar hand clap. <clears throat> Ladies and gentlemen, nothing tonight is outsourced from anywhere else. From your master of ceremony, to the food we will eat, to the tables on which you're seated, to even you, the guests, all of us are from Macquarie University. We are here for our homecoming dinner, introducing ourselves to friends that we haven't seen in a long time, but most importantly, to get to know each other. So I'll start by telling you a little bit about me, then later I want to hear a little more about you. My name is Simon Kasiatin. Enter this university at the start of this century, to be exact, in 2000. I have since had two and a half universities, for two and a half degrees from this university. Now, don't ask me where the other half is. It will be completed in January at this very Freedom Square. What about you? Hey, no hand claps again. <laughs> By way of profession. I'm a communications person, not taught here at Macquarie, never been taught communication or what I do for a living. It means, therefore, as I clock 50 half the time of Macquarie, I'm yet to practice what I studied here. That also tells you the beauty of this university, that it trains, lets us all out in the world, and we go out there and work our way into excellence or even failure in things that have been taught or not taught at this university. Those are the incredible stories that we intend to share tonight when we move from one table to the other, meeting friends we haven't seen, or even strangers that will become friends from here tonight. So as we take our seats and relax from a long journey that each one of us has taken to be here tonight, let us now show you the other side of the incredible Macquarie University band. Let's take them away, gentlemen. We'll be right back.
if this is the presentation that gets us to catch our breath. Now you imagine that, that will get us on the dance floor to dance tonight. For dance we shall, without a doubt. It's a Friday. Ladies and gentlemen, as is usual courtesy and good tradition, we are, and I'm going to put it in the simplest form, at a school, a school we are so proud of. But amongst us are those who diligently head the school as, to use this word, and without all respect, as headmasters of the school, or better known as vice chancellors. In no particular order of age, allow me to introduce, and I will request when I mention your name, you wave to the crowd. Professor George Kiria, you are Vice Chancellor, 1986-1990. Professor Livingstone Nubobi, you are Vice Chancellor, 2004-2009. I remember you. <laughs> Professor John Dumba Sentamu, 2012-2017. And yes, you're a host tonight. You're the current kid on the block. Allow me to use that phrase. You are a host tonight. You are a distinguished headmaster. But most importantly, for the activities of Macquarie at 100, You've had a 25-hour day shift, burnt the midnight oil, complete with a team of dedicated people. Professor Barnabas Nawangwe, stand up. And since I have the honor of being the master of ceremony tonight, I will say don't sit. Please proceed to the podium and look at me. Just walk over there and look at me. For once, I have the honor and privilege to make a few commands to a man that would otherwise command me perhaps even to my death. <laughs> Professor Barnabas Nawangwe, the Vice Chancellor of Makere University since 2013, is not only here to speak in that capacity, but he's here to welcome us to our wonderful and incredible school. Let's accord him the silence and the attention he deserves. He won't take long. Thank you. Over to you. Thank you very much. Simon, the Chancellor of Makere University, Professor Ezra Suruma, the Chairperson of Council, Mrs. Lona Magara, I should have said the Chancellor and your dear wife. Mrs. Lona Magara, our Chairperson of Council, and the Dr. James Magara, The deputy chairperson of council is still on the way. Members of council, my predecessors, the former vice chancellors of Makere University, your excellencies, the high commissioners, ambassadors, and diplomats, members of the university management, the chairperson Makere University Endowment Fund, Dr. Maggie Kigozi, our keynote speaker, our partners and sponsors of the Makerere at 100 celebration, and you are very many, and you are all very important dignitaries, gallant alumni, our students, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen. Good evening, and a warm welcome to you, to your alma mater, and the beloved institution for our alumni and partners, respectively. Thank you for taking time off 
to attend the dinner of the century. Yes, this is indeed the dinner of Makerere University Century. And I congratulate all of you upon choosing to honor your beloved university. Makerere has over the century of its excellent service to humanity been a place of many firsts that have gone to, on to transform societies. When we opened doors to the first 14 students in January 1922, the fee was 60 shillings for the scholars. There were no resident students. One year later, on 13th December 1923, Sir Geoffrey Archer, then governor of Uganda, laid the foundation stone for the first permanent building in Makerere. This building still stands today at the School of Education, College of Education, and External Studies. In 1924, the medical school opened as a grass-thatched structure on the western slopes of Mlago Hill. Dr. Vamundaga and Dr. Vaziwane are two of the first lot of students admitted by the medical school in 1924 who later graduated in 1928. Dr. Wilbert Chagula, another graduate, would later leave Makerere to become the principal of the University College of Dar es Salaam after the dissolution of the University College of East Africa in 1970. In his book, Makerere Medical School, 50th Anniversary, W.D. Foster describes the medical school and the Mulago Teaching Hospital as, and I quote, among the best medical schools in the world, the facilities, the patients, and the research opportunities were almost unrivaled, end of quote. These graduates have gone on to save thousands of lives. At this point, ladies and gentlemen, I would like to give all artists and art lovers in the congregation a few questions to ponder upon. Did you know that our School of Industrial and Fine Arts and its humble beginnings were on the veranda of Mrs. Margaret Trowell and her husband, Dr. Hugh Trowell's residence in Mulago in 1937? Did you know that Margaret Trowell had to endure the bureaucratic hurdles of the colonial administration and the meager resources allocated to successfully get the art school up and running? Had it not been for her selflessness and sacrifice, the talents of artists like Grigore Malova, Sam Montiro, and Elimon Jao would never have been nurtured. While Grigore Malova went on to design Uganda's famous independence monument, Sam Muntiro later on became a lecturer at the art school and high commissioner for Tanganyika in London, 1963-1964. Eli Monjao and his wife Rebecca, a leading playwright and the 1962 English literature graduate of Makerere, later on helped found Pa Ya Pa, ya pa an art center in Nairobi. It is examples such as these that enrich our celebration as Makere marks a century of existence. Continuing on our trip down the Mamere Lone, on 3rd November 1938, the Duke of Gloucester laid the foundation stones for several Makere buildings, including the main building, in a ceremony described as the cutting of the first sword. The late Professor William St. Zakajubi, then a P5 pupil, of Makai Memorial School in Natete was privileged to bear witness to the ceremony together with his schoolmates. This single encounter motivated him to press, to press on until he only joined, but also until he not only joined but also served as Makerere's two-time vice chancellor. 
following the laying yes following the laying of foundations the 1940s marked a time of great instructional development at Makerere. 1941 marked the year when the main administration building, as well as both St. Francis and St. Augustine chapels were officially completed. Additionally, many of us present here today may not be aware that Makerere University was at one time home to the Uganda Museum. Although it was found, founded in 1908 and housed at Fort Lugard in Old Kampala, it was later moved into an old classroom block at Makere University, where it was officially opened in July 1942 by the governor of Uganda, Sir Charles Dundas. You may also wish to know that the main building basement where the printer was before the unfortunate incident of September 1920, I mean 2020, was an armory. Mm -hmm. That's where they stored the guns which the soldiers who went to Burma were given. The armory is so strong that the contractor has failed to demolish it. Mrs. Margaret Rowell offered her services as part-time honorary curator and helped to expand the museum collection to incorporate objects from all parts of the country until it was relocated to its current home at Kitante in 1951. In 1945, Makere opened her doors to the first female students. Remember, we started with the 14 men and the motto was, let us be men. This was marked by a change in the motto from let us be men to we build for the future. <laughs> Catherine Senkantuka and Sarah Nyendoha Ntiro, the first female to get a degree in East and Central Africa, were some of the first female students admitted to Makere University College. This groundbreaking change ushered in a new era of advancement for our mothers and sisters. 1948 marked the year when the Makerere Mosque was officially opened by Crown Prince Abdallah of Zanzibar. The Makerere Institute of Social Research was established in the same year as the East African Institute of Social Research. Professor Ali Mazirui and Professor Ap Apollon Svambi are some of these reputable research institutes former directors. In 1954, the Students Guild was established, and then only a young international student from Malawi, Professor James David Rubadiri, became Makerere's first guild president. He would later on become a Malawian diplomat academic and poet, playwright and novelist. By December of 1958, Professor Josephine Namboze had completed her medical degree at Makerere and was awaiting the outcome of her final exams at a secret location of campus. She passed and had to hastily return to Makerere as everyone on campus was looking for her. On 20th February 1959, at a ceremony presided over by Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth, the Queen Mother, and the Chancellor of the University of London, to which Makerere College was affiliated, Professor Nambos graduated as East Africa's first woman doctor. She has since gone on to influence countless numbers of young girls and women to pursue a career in medicine and STEM disciplines. You may wish to know that we'll be hosting a public lecture in honor of uh, the, the first female student, Sarah Antiro, very soon. On 20th February 1959, 
Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth, the Queen Mother, officially opened the new 33,000 square foot library building at Makere College. The library started in a small room in the main administration building in 1949. Today, the library has a total space of 12,000 square meters, or 129,166 square feet, and serves as an academic library, the National Refer Reference Library, National Legal Depository for All Works in Uganda, and a United Nations Depository. So you will note that the main building actually started off many of these other uh, activities. And you may wish to know that the main hall was actually a banquet hall for the British lecturers who could not go to, back to Britain during the war. So it was really there for them to dance, you know, whenever they wished to dance. In June 1962, Mackay University hosted its first significant international gathering, the first African Writers' Conference. The conference was a milestone in African literature, dealing directly with the legacy of colonialism. It attracted several African writers, such as Chinua Achebe and Wole Soyinka, who would eventually become internationally famous. Other prominent African writers who attended include Ezekiel Mfalele, Lewis Nkosi, Ngugi Wathyongo, then known as James Ngugi, and Rajat Nyogi, founder of Transition Magazine. The conference also helped spread Makerere's reputation beyond East Africa. By the mid-1960s, Makerere University was the largest and the most distinguished university in sub-Saharan Africa. On 1st July 1970, Makere became an independent national university of the Republic of Uganda. And on 8th October 1970, it was officially inaugurated as an autonomous university from the University of East Africa. His Excellency Dr. Apollo Milton Obote organized a grand ceremony in Freedom Square to which President Jomo Kenyatta of Kenya, who by the way is the first recipient of Makerere's honorary degree, Julia Senyerere of Tanzania, and Kenneth Kaunda of Zambia were invited. His Excellency Professor Peter Anyang Nyogo, who was the outgoing guild president, served as a mess bearer of the day. On the eve of Uganda's 13th independence celebrations, on 8th October 1975, Professor Timothy Wangusa became the first PhD graduate in the Department of Literature after Makere became Independent National University of Uganda. He went on to become a critically acclaimed Ugandan poet, novelist, and literary critic. He is equally acclaimed as part of the famous Makere class, 1964, that bore great writers, including Johnny Ruganda, Okelo Ochuli, Rosie Mboa, and Michere Mugo. Fast forward to 1993, and on 29th January, the President of the Republic of Uganda and Chancellor Maki University, His Excellency President Yoweri Kaguta Tivuhavura Museveni, conferred the Honorary Doctorate of Laws upon His Excellency Mwalim Julius Kambarage Nyerere in recognition of his excellent leadership over the nation of Tanzania. Mwalim Nyerere, who served as the first president of Tanzania, graduated from Makere University in 1947 with a diploma in education. His legacy has given birth to the Julius Nyerere Leadership Center, an initiative that provides a platform for distinguished African intellectuals scholars and other accomplished Africans to share, nurture, mentor, challenge, and account for the next generation of African leaders. And on 27th November 2009, former 
Tanzanian President and Makerere alumnus, His Excellency Benjamin Mkapa, was awarded an honorary Doctor of Laws of Makerere University. Staying with the awards on 12 December 2010, Makerere University conferred her honorary Doctor of Laws upon His Excellency President Yoweri Eric Agutam Seven and His Excellency Rashid Mufaume Kawawa. This was followed by the award of the Honorary Doctor of Laws to His Excellency Mwai Kivaki of Kenya on 24th January 2012. And finally, on the research front, Makerere has been at the forefront of groundbreaking developments, such as the discovery of Bucket's lymphoma, the development of rapid diagnostic kits for Ebola, uh, sorry, uh, Bucket's lymphoma, the use of nevirapine to prevent HIV transmission in childbirth, the development of rapid diagnostic kits for Ebola, and more recently for COVID-19. These discoveries, among other innovations, such as the development of drought-resistant varieties of crops, have improved the quality of life on the whole. And uh, I shouldn't forget that we were also the first to produce a fully electric car in Africa. We thank the government for initiating the 30 billion shillings per year Makere University Research and Innovations Fund, MACRIF. And I'm happy to introduce Professor Vazeo, who fought for this fund. <laughs> Professor Vazeo, do you mind uh, waving to the people? That fund has actually transferred Makere in very many different ways. And whereas this fund has greatly enhanced our research output, only 774 grants out of 1,970 applications, a rate of 39.1% have been awarded. The limited resource envelope means that a lot of wonderful, would be impactful projects have to be left out. Furthermore, 172 of these projects have so far submitted their closeout reports. 52 of the projects ended at the startup level, while the majority ended at the point of transition to scale. The least, 15.09%, ended while already undergoing scale. I therefore call upon you, our alumni and partners, to join us in not only increasing our resource envelope to find more research, but also collaborating with us to facilitate more projects to, uh, to end while already undergoing scale, to create job openings for our youth. You may wish to know that we are now in the process of establishing a technology transfer center and business incubation innovation hub in collaboration with the UNDP. That now will make Makerere a truly research and innovation university in the same league as major global universities. And we want to thank the UNDP for that. As I have said, we call upon all of you, our alumni around the world. And we have counted and know that there are 400,000 of you still living to come and to the support of your alma mater so that you can support this university
for our children. Let's clap for the current crop of Makere University students. Ladies and gentlemen, distinguished guests tonight, as we progress with our event tonight, following through the program, allow me in a special way looking around the room to recognize in a special way the former chairperson of the University Council, Professor Dr. Engineer Wana Otiem Charles, Ladita Pono Binu. And of course, without a doubt, the current chairperson of the University Council, Mrs. Lona Magara and your dear husband, most welcome. Now, what you heard from Professor Nawangwe was a walk down memory lane. But what a walk with incredible milestones. But watch for this particular one. That indeed, in actuating the universities and other tertiary institutions act of 2001, this incredible university, starting in 2003, then received its first chancellor who was not a head of state. In a special way, and posthumously, let's put our hands together for that incredible gentleman, Professor Apollon Sibambi. <clears throat> Subsequent to him, he was followed in that high-ranking office by Professor George Mondo Kagonyera, who is with us tonight, Professor George. I had chosen to welcome everyone in their mother tongue. I'm having a situation on this one because even the current chancellor speaks the same language and kind of looks exactly than his predecessor, except for a little technicality in height. <laughs> Professor Ezra Suruma, <laughs> the current chancellor of Makere University. Most welcome. 
and in recognizing the leadership on the land on which we sit. Makere University is not complete in a name if you don't say Makere University Kampala. Not Makere University elsewhere or anywhere, but it's Makere University Kampala. So if we must be in harmony with our landlords here in Kampala, you will allow me in a special way recognize and welcome the executive director of Kampala Capital City Authority. That's Madame Dorothy Kisaka over there. And in a bit of uh, a protocol nightmare for me, but also a nice one for the university, this city of ours of Kampala is headed at a political level by a Lord Mayor. But especially for Makere University, you are Lord Councillor to the council happens to be the Deputy Lord Mayor. So allow me, again in a special way, welcome and recognize the presence of Honorable Doreen Nyanjura. <clears throat> that, ladies and gentlemen and guests, was to get permission to proceed with this event, complete with the bells and whistles, at least from our landlords. So no complaints on noise pollution, over parting, and the police has been informed that no breatharizer for anyone coming from this event, at least not tonight. Now, let's take a little bit of a breather. But as we do so, it will be extremely futile for all of us to have come here for our homecoming dinner. And we only move between the entrance to our seats to the serving point for dinner when we do, back to our seats and back to our homes. So once in a while, stretch your leg, crane your neck to the next table, say hello, interface, integrate, meet. And I'm now going to give you an opportunity to do so. With this, what they told me to present in a very dramatic way, because what you are about to see is something unprecedented with regard to the drama department of this university. A presentation of all your years at the university, the cultures that you enjoyed, the names that you were given. Some of you call yourselves cabinists, others call themselves rats, others call themselves undeserved gentlemen. But all of us. <laughs> That's the beauty and mix that makes us the great Macquarie. Some of you are generous with not even so much as a shirt. Some of you are everything in between. But well, we are all gallant Macquarians. So where are my dramatists, drama actors, and the incredible performers from Macquarie University who are going to show us in just five minutes all the cultures this place has? And hey, I better never have performed here better than you will perform. Thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, from the liberal and performing arts, film and drama, second year class, the altar of knowledge, Makere University. Okay. 
to an unknown god, the faith of their ancestors, the immortality of the soul, and religious association. But nothing of this kind ever floated in their minds. Satan has employed his agents with part of success in Africa. In reality, it was never Africa nor the Africans that were lost. The dark continent was not actually dark after all. Such ignorance floated in the
than facing the risk of the mass radical consciousness. It is not as it seems. Such is drama. They speak in abstract language, use figurative expressions to mean some serious stuff, but at the end of the day, the best drama is taught, practiced, and emanates from Makere University. You will agree whether you want to or you do not. And so you saw that piece. But importantly, the elements where they're talking about the big people that are indeed alumnus of this wonderful university. And they equipped, you didn't clap, that many of you are here. So clap for yourselves. Unless, of course, you're saying you're not big enough to be described by the word big. So earlier, the list of as vice chancellors, chairpersons of council, there is a list I am yet to introduce of the distinguished guild presidents. Now we are having a, 
I've been reminded to wait because a certain distinguished guild president, fortune is only changed in the last 48 hours. So I need to, so his, his colleagues are waiting for him to arrive in a certain way. We had arranged some green linen for their table. That was, of course, five days before. Now we are looking for other colors. But you know, they have to appear in style. These are political leaders of the guild at the university. You have to be sensitive to how they dress and appear. So that will be coming later and shortly. Without further ado, ladies and gentlemen, I wish in a very special way to invite the chairperson of Macquarie University Council, Mrs. Lorna Magara, to come and speak to us. But as you make your way here, I wish again in a very special way to pay special tribute to all our sponsors in your grandeur. The incredible Centenary Bank, MTN, Total Energies, Airtel, New Vision, and everyone in between, including and not limited to my friends at Umeme. We thank you. Gentlemen, please give him a round of applause, Dr. Magara. Thank you very much, uh, the MC, Mr. Castiate. Your Excellencies, the High Co Commissioners, Ambassadors, and Diplomats here present, the Executive Director, Kampala Capital City Authority, Mrs. Kisaka Dorothy, my dear friend, the Deputy Lord Mayor, Honorable Doreen Nyanjura, the Chancellor, Makere University, Dr. Suruma, Professor Suruma, the former Chancellor, Professor Mondo Kagonyera. Very happy to see you, sir. The former Chairperson of Council, Engineer Wana Etienne, I took after him. Lovely to see you, sir. <laughs> Members of council present, the Vice Chancellor, Professor Banabas Nawangwe, the former Vice Chancellors present, a real delight to have you, sirs. Members of the University Management, the Chairperson of Makere, University Endowment Fund, Dr. Maggie Chigosi, and members present, the chairperson of Makere University Holdings, Mr. Christopher Musoke, and members present, representatives from the various government agencies and institutions, our dear, dear partners in the Makere at 100 celebrations and your representatives, Gallant alumni, our students, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, you're very, very, very welcome. With great pleasure, I join the Chancellor and the Vice Chancellor to welcome you all to this beautiful celebration of our alma mater, Makere University. What an incredible journey that the Vice Chancellor has just taken us through of the last 100 years and the beauty and the strength of the people that have come through these gates. It's an honor to have you all join us at this Makere at 100 alumni homecoming dinner appropriately themed through these gates. I want to pay special um, thanks and gratitude to our Department of Performing Arts. Let's give them another round of applause. Thank you very much are performing arts and film. As they reminded us in the Makere Anthem, we should not forget through all the years those who have gone through the gates of Makere. On behalf of the University Council, I therefore wish to thank you all for sparing precious time and resources to be part of this historic celebration. Each one of you left a mark at this university. 
your footprint was etched into the halls of residence, into the lecture theaters, the library, the chapel, the mosque, and many other areas we often congregated. If walls and vegetation could speak, countless stories would be told of friendships nurtured, dreams birthed, and destinies set on course. This evening is an evening of celebrating those memories, rekindling friendships, and establishing new networks. Makere will always be our home, a place of new exciting opportunities and legacy creation. We are here today because of the legacies of great men and women whose ideas helped shape Makere as we know it today. Today's homecoming dinner is one of the many events in our year-long commemoration of 100 years of impactful existence and distinguished service to this nation, region, continent, and to the world. I'll just walk down a few of these events that have already taken place. A recurrent event of this celebration has been and continues to be our lecture series in honor of distinguished personalities whose lives and legacies helped shape Makere's destiny and that of our beloved continent over the past century. To date, we have held five public lectures, each delivered by our very own gallant alumni. The very first Makere at 100 public lecture on the theme, a legal perspective on the role of governing councils in the management of higher education institutions was delivered on the 9th of February 2022 by a gallant alumnus and Attorney General of the Republic of Uganda, Honorable Chirio Achiwanuka. It was followed on the 26th of April 2022 by our second Makere 100 public lecture in honor of an equally gallant alumnus Guild President, great scholar, seasoned economist, and long-serving governor of the Bank of Uganda, the late Professor Emmanuel Tumsime Mtevide. The lecture was on the theme, Economic Recovery and Resilience in a Post-COVID World, the Role of Higher Education Institutions. It was very ably delivered by the Permanent Secretary of Ministry of Finance, Planning and Economic Development, and Secretary to the Treasury, Mr. Ramadan Govi. On the 6th of May 2022, we hosted the Katikiro of Buganda Kingdom, Oetibwa Charles Peter Maiga, who delivered the third Makere at, at 100 public lecture on the theme, revisiting the life of the late Katikiro Nsibirwa on the lenses of Makere at 100 years, the contributions of cultural institutions in engendering public goods. On the 23rd of June 2022, we gathered to listen to another distinguished alumna, Professor Joy Kwesiga, deliver the fourth Makere at 100 lecture series in honor of our very first Ugandan Vice Chancellor, the late Frank Kalimzo. The theme on that day was remembering Frank Kalimzo lessons for universities in cultivating a culture of service and distinguished leadership. On the 8th of July, we were privileged to host celebrations of 80 years of Professor Timothy Wangusia, his vibrant life, distinguished service to Makere, and outstanding contribution to Uganda, East Africa, and Africa's literary history. We have also been privileged to host gatherings such as the International Conference on Gender Studies in Africa from 23rd to 27th May, among others. A few days ago, on Monday, 18th July, we were privileged to hold our fifth Makere at 100 series lecture in honor of a truly global icon of peace and reconciliation, the beloved Madiba. On that occasion, the keynote address on the legacy of Nelson Mandela and the role of higher education in the African Union Agenda 2063 was delivered by alumnus Professor Augustus Nuagaba. 
Makerere University has impacted lives beyond the borders of Uganda. Alumni in the diaspora have joined in these celebrations. And on the 8th of July, we joined our Kenya alumni at a convention in Nairobi where gallant alumnus, His Excellency Professor Peter Anyangnyong delivered the keynote address on leveraging 100 years of excellence in building a transformed Kenyan society. On the 25th of February, our student leaders held a symposium at the East African Community Headquarters in Arusha, Tanzania. On the 15th of June, we held our first Twitter space hosted by none other than the Vice Chancellor, Professor Barnabas Nawangwe. This was graced by our Chairperson Makere Endowment Fund, Dr. Maggie Chigozi, and not one or two, but three former Guild Presidents. They included Mr. Opio Oloya, Honorable Nobat Mao, and Mr. Ivan Bowe. Over 3,300 listeners tuned in from all over the world to hear our speakers share on the reflections on the past century and Makere's next 100 years. Our second Twitter space was held on 20th July, where close to 2,000 listeners tuned in to listen to Mr. Don Wanyama and uh, our alumni, Mr. Onapito Okomoloit, Mr. Ms. Karo Beyanga, Dr. Sara Namsonge Kale, and Mr. Ivan Rugamba. They were discussing Makere University's contribution to shaping Uganda's media landscape. All these events, ladies and gentlemen, have allowed us to reflect upon the legacies of great men and women who resolved to build for the future despite various challenges of their day. One legacy I wish to single out is the late Katikiro Martin Luther Sibira, who was at the forefront of securing land resources that enabled expand Makere's estate. Although he paid the ultimate price for this decision with this single act, he forever wove his life into those of countless generations of Makarians. He permanently etched his name into the annals of our history. Ladies and gentlemen, the onus is now upon us to do the same or even better for the coming generations. As part of the Makere at 100 celebrations, we have earmarked several legacy projects to lay a foundation for the coming century. We have such a great opportunity as we celebrate these 100 years to lay a fresh a new foundation for Makere for the next 100 years. Some of these legacy projects we are looking at now include a university teaching hospital in Katalemwa, a student's resource center on the main campus and students' hostels, especially for the girls, and postgraduate students at the main campus, Katanga and Sa Apolo Kagwa Road. We sincerely thank the Government of Uganda and the First Lady, of the Mini First Lady and Minister of Education and Sports, Honorable Janet Kataham Seveni in particular, for kick-starting our legacy projects through negotiations with Bridgen Foundation to secure funding worth 300 million US dollars for our teaching hospital. It is set to be developed on 50 acres of our estate at Katalimwa. The funding will cater for the construction, equipping, and full operationalization of the ultra-modern 300-bed teaching hospital. The facility will serve as a modern medical training center and boost the country's and region's innovation and referral capacity. Malago will now begin to get some relief from the pressure it has had as the only referral hospital in Uganda. What remains of our legacy projects are the Students' Resource Center and Students' Hostels. Our Secretariat has made many channels available 
through which we can donate to these legacy projects, including through bank transfers and mobile money payments. Dr. Maggie Chigozi, the chairperson of the Makere Endowment Fund, will give further guidance on this matter. We therefore call upon you, our gallant alumni, ladies and gentlemen, to donate to this cause. Furthermore, we encourage you to engage us for a round table discussion on how best we can leverage our 100 years of excellence in building a transformed society for generations to come. Once again, I thank you very much for making your time to come and join us all to, as we celebrate. And just to reiterate what the MC said at the beginning, we do not want you to come in and sit at your table, have dinner and leave. This is a homecoming. And so we want you to have the opportunity to stand up, see that colleague, that uh, hall met, that year met, that you haven't seen in so many years and begin to network and to catch up of, over the so many years that you haven't seen each other. And so as we do that, I would like once again to thank you and to bless you. May God bless you and have an excellent remainder of the evening. I would like to invite you to, to dinner. Dinner is now ready and served and our ushers will come and guide you from your tables but once again, please enjoy the evening. Enjoy the music that is going to be played by our School of um, Arts. And have a great evening. God bless you. I will say nothing until you are ushered back to your seat. <laughs> Just in case my words act as a wrong soundbite. That, ladies and gentlemen, was also taught at Makere University. If you didn't pick your degree in being a gentleman, don't worry. There is plenty where you are. The company is huge. The chairperson's remarks only illuminate even further that a hundred years is worth a celebration but there is hundreds of more years yet to be celebrated. And they have to be celebrated and they have to be bigger than the previous 100 years. Can we be a part of that? And that's the clarion call we, call, we, we get from her call tonight. That is an excuse for a hand clap. Now, Macquarie University, in its incredible leadership across the world, has also donated leaders to other tertiary institutions. And so in the house tonight, I wish to introduce some vice chancellors from other public universities, and even private ones in the country. But guess what they told me? That in introducing them, I must indicate clearly that they are gallant Macalarians. So here we go. This one, I think, doesn't need much introduction, but I will nonetheless do it. If not, they will cut part of my check tonight. Professor Elia Bulugujo, you're the Vice Chancellor at Deja University. <laughs> Some of you in this hall still owe him coaching money. You didn't pay him many years ago when he introduced you to mathematics of a lower grade at Macquarie University. Now, I don't know whether I should say that, that you were conducting private business at the university. Introducing youngsters to university before they could get there. Professor Maud Kamatenesi, Vice Chancellor Bishop Stewart University. Please wave to us. Now, the chairperson of the University Council of Mbara University of Science and Technology, Dr. Warren Namara. He says he's not only an alumnus of Makere, but he's from the great Northcott Hall. Now listen to this one. The name is Mrs. Teresa Mary Obo Ni Tumsime Vyarohanga, the chairperson of Gulu University Council. <laughs> Chair
if each of her names was a year spent at Makere University, she would have Professor Doctor to her name as well. Now, ladies and gentlemen, dinner is served. We will do as we have always done through our journey of education. If you recall correctly, that before you opened the contents of an examination paper, especially one from the Uganda National Examinations Board, there was a bold instruction that said, do not open this booklet until you're told to do so. You remember that? Now that's one of the things that scared the hell out of me many times. Do not open this booklet until you're told to do so. And then someone will come on the blackboard, scribble some words, start, stop. So tonight, until the usher comes to your table, do not rise up to the serving point, except if you're rising up to say hello to a colleague, an alumnus, who's part of the serving team. And they are there. <laughs> yes, we provide you full circle. And furthermore, in recognition, Stanchat Bank, thank you very much. Now, those clapping have no financial facility with them or they. <laughs> Absa, we thank you as well. And please, for those financial institutions, tonight is when you're going to look at we, your creditors, with a bit of a kind heart and the spirit of camaraderie. The idea of collecting debt tonight is suspended. Not so, Mukuru Fabian Kassel. Thank you. <laughs> Allow me also, in a special way, welcome Dr. Isan Sobia, the chairperson of the Makere University Business School Council. Where are you? Here, I wish I had known you earlier. I would have had my MBA at the last graduation, but. Wow. As the ushers make your, their way to your tables, the guild presidents of Makere are present. I'm not going to put the years because some of them are safe for not mentioning when they were guild presidents at this institution because it could reveal just how young they are. Someone is whispering, Sarah Kajingo, yes. <laughs> Sarah Kajingo, one of the few incredible Lady Guild presidents who has led and left an indelible mark at the university. Sarah, most welcome. That's the standard side of a, size of a Guild president. Until I mention the next, Ivan Bowe. <laughs> Shamim Nambasa. Don't be fooled by the size. <laughs> ha! Yusuf Chiranda. <laughs> if you see his campaign poster and see him today, then you believe in the theory of evolution by Sir Charles Darwin. <laughs> Did someone say the Honorable Nobat Mao is in this house? The brand new, freshly unveiled Minister of Justice and Constitutional Affairs? The vetting process took a little longer, and the traffic is a bit mad for a Friday evening. But when he comes, he will have come. You will see him. Ladies and gentlemen, the delay tactic, as I'm told the politicians know it, is to show a sign of importance, which without a doubt, he is. Without further ado, how about we allow our band to serenade us into this dinner as we also move about and say hello to long-lost friends, acquaintances, and everything in between. Because your time at the university, don't kid yourself that you are all too serious. We had our picadillos and the little menaces that we are up to. Some of us are notorious for many things for which I was asked politely not to mention, but I see you. Good evening. So 
Nabandi wano kulize Nindirite owange Zegwe nasima mubanji Atanti bulijo Wete gere zanganya bantu Kwe muta baga noburu nji Baba wala nalwe baba banji Ne baba le mesa omu kwanu that it is, to produce the great men and women that have moved our country, our region, the whole continent and even beyond. One hundred years ago, men and women who are less advantaged than us today started this great institution. They have built it through the years to make it the great institution that it is. To produce the great men and women that have moved our country, our region, the whole continent and even beyond. They are the ones responsible for making us who we are. We should also make a commitment that if they did what they did, what can we do so that a hundred years later, People can also say, yes, a hundred years ago, some people made Magere even a greater institution, and it is what has made us what we are. So this is an opportunity for all of us to make that contribution. It is important for transforming our country, for making sure that our children, great-grandchildren, will live a life 
better than what we have lived. You will be investing in your future. Organize small meetings wherever you are, Makerarians, wherever you are around the world, and commemorate your days at Makere University. That is also important because all those activities help in building the spirit of Makere University. So please, I call upon all of you to join us to celebrate this as we contribute to making the university even greater. Please, you can follow us on our website, www.mag.ac.ug, and there are special pages there dedicated to 100 years celebration. We have got big dreams of transforming our university so that it can be empowered to transform our society, to move our society, to move our people out of poverty in the fastest way possible. And we have got projects through which we want to do this. We want to be a more research-led university. We want to do more research to solve Uganda's and Africa's problems. And of course, the problems of humanity, just like we have solved some before, including the wonderful research in the HIV, producing very good products that are helping the entire world to solve the issues of HIV. We have also come up with the innovations in agriculture, in engineering. We were the first to come up with an electric car on the continent. But we believe that we can do this on an even bigger scale, including coming up with a university teaching and research hospital. We are the leaders in tropical medicine, but we don't have a hospital which will assist us to do more research. We want to come up with the science and technology and business incubation center so that this center can help not just our students, but all young people who have got great ideas on producing products that are going to transform our economy, give employment to our people. And of course, we want to come up with a student center so that our students can have a one-stop center where they can solve all the issues that they have. We want also to improve the entire infrastructure, including the accommodation for our students. All this will require our stakeholders to hold our hand, to move together with them, for us to be able to realize that. Please, you can follow us on our website, www.mag.ac.ug, and there are special pages there dedicated to 100 years celebration. Makere University is celebrating 100 years of excellent service to humanity. Over those 100 years, a lot of people have contributed greatly to making Makere the great university that it is now, including people making sacrifices for land on which the university was built, and we are indebted to these people. Makere has produced great statesmen, great people in all trades who have moved not just Uganda, but the entire East African and Central African region and the entire continent. We are now celebrating those achievements and we are looking back and saying, can we leverage those successes to build even more for the future? As we celebrate 100 years, we are calling upon all our stakeholders, particularly our alumni, so that we can more meaningfully contribute to transforming our society. Please, you can follow us on our website, www.mag.ac.ug, and there are special pages there dedicated to 100 years celebration. So I welcome all of you, I encourage all of you to participate as much as you can. Professor Maggie Chigozi. I am uh, an entrepreneur, a farmer, uh, but in this case at Makerere today, I am an associate professor. 
um, and I chair the Makerere Endowment Fund. We are putting in place the Mark Advance system where money will be received very simply through mobile money, PayPal, through the bank. E-banking is now available, so globally anybody can contribute to the Makerere Endowment Fund. And we all know our diaspora are all over the world. Wherever you go, you'll meet graduates from Makerere and you find them in quite senior positions. And they love, like we all do, we love our alma mater. It gave us so much. I personally have to say that, you know, my doctor's degree was acceptable in whatever part of the world I went, I could get a job. And uh, so we are truly grateful uh, for this institution that made it possible for us to do that. Our request to you is to check the, the system. Are you there? Are your names correct? Do you want to update us? Where are you? Is that email that we have the one that will get to you? So that we send you information. We want to really be very participatory, to send you information about what your university is doing, but also you let us know what are you doing and can we help you or can you help us? Uh, so that's why the Mac Advanced System and the database is going to be critical. Yes, yesterday someone said, can you wish me happy birthday? And we can do that very, very easily with the system that we are putting in place uh, so that you feel a part of your alma mater. We have uh, talked to all the colleges and we have identified exactly where we need money. One simple one for our poor young uh, students who cannot afford to complete their, um, their studies, they need scholarships. So we're looking at scholarships. The other thing that Makere is really well known for and makes a difference globally is research. We are looking for funding for our PhD students to do their research and contribute again in all the various ways to, to our nation and the world. Uh, we are looking for funding for the various colleges. They have projects that they want to put in place. Some want to put up their buildings. Others want to put up a hospital. The, 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 the medical side want to have a hospital on campus because we've only had a hospital at Mulago. They want to see a hospital on campus. So that's one for that one. So we are looking at our alumni be showing interest in their own college of faculty, we used to call them faculties, and wanting to support that. So the faculties are identifying, they have different needs. They are identifying where they require this, we shall have on our website, and uh, we'll encourage the alumni interested in that. Uh, Makerere University is also very rich in assets. We have plenty of land. Land in really um, important areas like the Central Business District. And uh, we are looking for investment in, you know, either a hotel, uh, you know, uh, whatever will fit. We have 17 acres of land uh, not very far away that we would like to, to see what projects can go there. We need to build halls of residence. Yes, it was privatized. A lot of students are staying out there, but we have the land. Why can't we have halls of residence for our students? So those are the kinds of things that we really hope your money will do. How do you know it has done it? We are going to be reporting at every stage. You will get a direct response to you as an individual, and then we'll make sure you get the newsletters, all of you get the newsletters, and the vice chancellor reports back as to where each project is. Plus, of course, the heads of uh, the colleges, they'll be able to talk to you directly. We are hoping the Twitter space that we have now created uh, will, will continue, will be continuous, so that updates are given to our, the, the, the contributors to our fund.
My name is Professor Maggie Chigozi. I am uh, an entrepreneur, a farmer, uh, but in this case, at Makerere today, I am an associate professor uh, and I chair the Makerere Endowment Fund. Uh, this is a fund that was put in place many, many years ago, but has been re-energized in 2014 under Dr. Martin Alike as chair. And in 2021, September, I took over, uh, appointed by the Makerere Council Chair, Dr. Laura Ma Magara. Um, we have got a good team a team of uh, lawyers, economists, uh, finance experts, uh, uh, business uh, women. Uh, so I have a very strong team to help me uh, drive the Makerere Endowment Fund forward. Uh, we, we have the Endowment Fund and our money is kept in uh, banks, but also we have consultants that are helping us to find where we get the most interest. So we do have fund managers that are handling the money that we have already. We do have some money uh, already on the accounts. The role of the, the, the Makerere Endowment Fund is to raise funds from alumni and partners and anyone who is interested, who thinks Makerere University plays a very important role in building the capacity of our youth and uh, enabling them to, to get jobs. So anyone who can raise funds will be approached by the fund. We have started off already by working on our new strategic plan, a strategic plan that will drive us for the next three years. How are you going to be a part of it? How are you going to ensure that my grandchildren can also come into Makerere and get something close to what I got. We have great teachers. Academia, no doubt. We have great uh, lecturers, great uh, professors. They're here, they're still here. And also we are training more. We are a great school for training PhDs. I think I hear we have at least 400 already and we continue, we continue training even more. So there'll be good lecturers for our students in the future, but only if the infrastructure can be good for them, the accommodation can be good for them. Let us contribute to the Makerere Endowment Fund. Let us run at the centenary run. The centenary run is in October. It's really the highlight of our activities here and uh, you can contribute by buying the, the, the t-shirt and, and it will be sent to you. We are able to send it to you wherever you are. Uh, you may have to cover the cost of transport, but let us be dressed appropriately and run with us. Run online. If you are not in Kampala, run online. If you are in Kampala, you can do five kilometers. Even I can walk five kilometers. You can run five kilometers, you can run 10 and even 20. I uh, hear we don't go as far as a marathon, so no, no more than 20. But uh, join us, and that will be uh, the exciting, uh, you know, last activity for the Makata 100. But Mark continues. Mark continues. Now we are looking at the next 100 years. University Basa? Aha. Uh -huh. He's going to get his collection of slips. Those of you who didn't finish, you are, you are representing you. <laughs> ah, okay, very well. Uh -huh. Now, the accounting officer of this university, that's the name he prefers to call himself in terms of designation, but the official one is university secretary, Mr. Yusuf Chiranda. A man supervising those that taught him and not in the recent past. Alfred Masiche Namoa, academic registrar. Where are you? 
Is he still around? He will stand up appropriately. Ah, there we go. Pardon? Representing him. Incredible. A representative. What about Mr. Samuel Lawrence, the Director for Human Resources? Ah, incredible. Thank you very much. In our time at the university, now when I say our time, I'm going to show you my cohort very soon. A dean of students was something between God the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, and the devil. Now, there is where the dean of students used to be. <laughs> he either chose life or death unto you, depending on your conduct. I don't know whether Mrs. Winfred Kabumbuli. <laughs> and someone said amen now you know her position <laughs> I also want to admit and I said let's not kid ourselves let us be honest with what we did with our time at Makere talk about the incredible stuff we did in the classrooms the laboratories and the theaters but also let's not forget to be candid about the things we did not do for example, I will start. Not once Professor Nawangwe. In my entire time at Makere University, and like I said earlier, I have two and a half degrees from here. I have never stepped inside the university library. <laughs> Not at all. I was more at the university canteen at night, more than I ever went to the library and any of the two chapels. And I know those of my colleagues who, as I tell my story, are looking down. They don't want me to mention my inspirers. But nonetheless, I wish to introduce Professor Helen Viamujisha, the university librarian. Maybe now I can come to pay you a visit. Where is she? And I know her personally. She's in the library. <laughs> And some of you have not returned some of those books. The records are intact. We will find you. Director Internal Audit, this is your role now. Mr. Yorach Nono, please find for us those who have not returned university books. We need them. Is that you standing? The Internal Auditor? I have a feeling my audio is not clear at the back. We need to audit that and see. The Director legal affairs in acting capacity, Mr. Hudson Musoke. Sebo, where are you? I hope he's not drafting an intention to sue to the service providers of especially electricity that, as they say, kumbaga tebawura umufsiwuf. You saw what Umeme just did. Mr. Paul Agaba, the one of procurement and disposal. Where are you? Uh -huh. Since you're both I met, now I know where to come. Ladies and gentlemen, this event has been put together not just by the miraculous work of the committee led by university leadership, but also importantly through the generosity of the following people. Now I will invite just four of them to come forward and just greet us so that when we are next celebrating our 100th and plus one, plus two, plus three, they are able to also generously step forward, be counted, and contribute as they have done tonight. So in no particular order of the sums contributed, Mr. Michael Seguaya, I hope this has been written well. The Executive Director, Chief Finance Officer of Absa Bank, please step forward. Come to the podium. My good old friend, Mr. Don Wanyama, Chief Executive Officer of Vision Group. Ms. Candy Okoboy, Head of Legal Stand Big Bank. If for nothing to increase the money on the podium, but also create some gender balance. So, where are you, Ms. Candy Okoboy? That's a good laugh. So as we wait for our dear friend Candy, may I request 
that you choose amongst you who steps that microphone first to say hello to us. Consider all demographics from size, height, and amount of money in the pocket. I'm, I'm sure we will, uh, you'll know that we considered height first. <laughs> well, the room is really packed with VIPs, so for protocol, I'll just request that you allow me to recognize uh, the Chancellor, acknowledge the Chairperson Council, Vice Chancellor, and all the other guests present, alumni, ladies and gentlemen, good evening. It is a pleasure to be here, both as an alumnus, but also as a leader of the Vision Group, which is a key partner and sponsor of Makere at 100 Celebrations. When the notion of these celebrations came up, it was a no-brainer for us at the Vision Group that we had to be a central participant. This is because whereas Makere University represents the best of academia in this country, the Vision Group represents the best of media in this country. Like polls attract, so they say. And I must add that the partnership so far is really good. I want to use this opportunity to thank uh, the Makere at 100 Secretariat, led by Mr. Awel Wihanganye, which has ensured that our partnership with the university has gone on very seamlessly. I also thank the university leadership for the great events that you've been able to put together since the celebrations were launched last year. We have seen massive engagements through the public lectures. Uh, you had the council chairperson mention them. We have seen activities in Nairobi, and soon you'll be in Chigali, Dar es Salaam, London. We have seen the Twitter spaces, as the council chair mentioned them, and the honor I had to moderate one of them this week. Among the many other activities, we really applaud you. And we know that it's going to get better as we move to the climax of the celebrations. Uh, to the alumni here, just allow me to corrupt the words of John F. Kennedy, the 35th American president. The challenge to you is to ask not what Makere can do for you, but rather what you should be able to do for Makere. And I hope that we shall use this dinner to reflect on what contribution we as the alumni can make to this university as it begins the journey for the next 100 years. Thank you. It will be suicidal for me to live here without acknowledging fellow rats. Rats Oye, E Michele Oye. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. <clears throat> Thank you very much, Don. E Makere Oye. That was a good way. Your Excellencies, um, Professor Seruma, the Chancellor, uh, the Chairperson, Makere University, the Council, Professor Nawangwe, the Management Alumni, ladies and gentlemen. I'm honored uh, to represent ABSA to this great dinner. We started this journey some time ago, and uh, it's been a great privilege that uh, uh, we've come this far. I think I'm going to make mine a bit personal and, and just share, since we are talking about through the gates. I came here, I was around here 47 years ago. Yes, my mom worked in Makerere. <laughs> and uh, she served this institution for 30 years plus. And trust me, the time I was born, she was working here. So I joined Makerere 27 years ago in the great university hall. Hey, baby boy. Uh, doing BCOM. I have fond memories of this place. For me, the first and key one is that I met Jesus Christ in this place. The second one is the fact that whereas they are talking about libraries, my first term, it 
was term time then, uh, has a bit broke. I see this article in the papers, and it was about mushrooms. I went to the library, researched about it, and started growing mushrooms. For the years I was here in Makere, I supplied a company called Domino's Pizza for, with mushrooms for all those years. That's where my banking starts. I also wanted to say this. I also experienced my first heartbreak. <laughs> but there are also good things in Makerere. I met my wife here 20 years ago. I have actually never left Makerere because Uncle Oni, my pastor, is here and I still come to Makerere. I think mine is a thank you, and I want to thank the staff, those who have served this university, uh, present, those who have gone. Thank you for the impact. It's been transformational. If you travel around the world, uh, it's such amazing that they will talk about Makere. Thank you very much, Obugalo, to the staff. I want to thank you for the patience patience in dealing with students. At times you see the papers and see the things they do. I want to be very grateful to you for the patience in handling them because you are true parents. I want to thank you for resilience. You have weathered the storm. As Professor was going through the details from 1922, clearly there have been so many storms in this institution, but you have weathered the storm. I want to thank you for humility. We, we have one of the brightest brains here, and yet at times we may not be recognizing you enough, but you continue to serve. Thank you for that humility. I want to thank you for the hard work. We talked about research. I was reminded about the a thousand times it took to make a bulb. Clearly, out of this innovation that we had today, there was a lot of hard work. Thank you very much. And lastly, I want to thank you for professionalism, allowing the different views, conflict resolutions, because that spreads out to the rest of the community. You, we have been around as Makere for a hundred years. As APSA, it's over 95 years. We are honored to be part of this journey as we build for the future. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much. He talked about his first experience of a heartbreak, being at Makere, and gladly he spoke in past tense. Some of you would perhaps speak in the present tense. But I beg you, let it not be the future tense. And it's not what you are thinking, Ivan. Failing an exam can be heartbreaking. An exam in class. So it's not what you are thinking. And sorry that you failed but still made it out. In that exam, you know which paper it was. And who was the lecturer and supervisor and many others. Ladies and gentlemen, as we continue to recognize those who through their deep pockets and generosity of their hearts have chosen to participate by contributing towards the success of this event, I wish one to apologize that we are running later than our schedule. But I also recognize that it's a Friday evening. I take cognizance of our respective ages, tests and preferences, and our abilities to accumulate darkness in whichever way it manifests itself. Some of us prefer it longer in the dark. Others prefer to find darkness. Others prefer for darkness to find them in their homes. Let's reach an agreement that we shall live together later than now. <clears throat> I wish to recognize Professor Samuel Chamanyua, the Vice Chancellor of Bunyoro University. 
a proud alumnus. I'm also told that since we are who we are, the Ministry of Education and Sports, with the Commissioner for Higher Education and Training, Mrs. Jody Uzamkunda, present, we cannot have a night without introducing you. Mrs. Jody Uzamkunda. Dr. Izobra Beinom Jisha, you are the Director of Makere University Gender Mainstreaming Directorate. Thank you for being here. And before I invite the next sponsor to say hello to us, he doesn't know I am going to invite him. So it means he has no speech. He's just going to say hello and sit back. I will, in another special way, say that there is something that fascinated us earlier on. We saw a gentleman, Palexarans, walk his lady to the podium. That's Dr. Magala. Please stand up. Remain standing. Those hand claps are because you walked your wife to the stage. But gallant Macalarians, please be reminded that this man has something bigger and greater beneath his caller. In 1987, two students graduated from a Macquarie University School of Dentistry or Dental Medicine. I don't know the term that it was. Just when they were the first. One of those two is Dr. Magala over here. With those kind remarks, as you can see, if you count properly, they are not 32 in my mouth. I need dentures, crowns, and every other fixing that can be done to save my mouth. <laughs> Having made you stand before this incredible crowd and give these accolades about you, I believe that your service will not only be life-saving for me, but will be gratis, free of charge. You may see. So many of you who have been grappling with what to do, broken teeth and everything that can go wrong. And I saw some of you not enjoying your dinner. You now know where to go. Mr. Fabian Kasi, your bank where the managing director, Centenary Bank, has been very generous to us. I have been asked by those that gave me this odious duty to invite you to say hello and perhaps declare, even if it is 30 seconds, of an open vault at Mapera House. Believe you me, I will be there and back. <laughs> Over there. Well, uh, thank you very much, Simon. All protocol observed. Uh, as he has mentioned, my name is Fabian Kasi. Uh, who, are, who is a, a, a gentleman and I want to salute all the gentlemen and uh, Professor Maggie talked about those who are in uh, uh, Africa Hall. Uh, I have been taken by surprise but of course as a gentleman I had to say something. First of all, all protocol observed. I'm happy to be here. As uh, you can talk about Makerere for education, for which we are very grateful, is the way you can talk about Centenary Bank for banking services. And it is because of the education that we got from here that Centenary Bank is able to do what it is doing now, pillar, standing on four pillars of affordability, accessibility of the services that we offer, sustainability. And for that, we thank you very much because we've got very good support from this university. And this juncture, I want to acknowledge the presence of the chairman of the center group. We have a center group which holds Centenary Bank, who is incidentally a former vice chancellor of this university, Professor Dumba Center. I don't know whether he's seated. He's the chairman of the center group. I also want to acknowledge the presence of the chairman of the Centenary Bank, Mr. Obol 
and not notable Mr. Gustavio Obuoch. And I also acknowledge the presence of um, the team leader in our branch here, who is also, you know, came along with us. Uh, we also have, who is also a former person here, uh, Mr. Uh, uh, sec, uh, professor, his doctor, he's the one who heads the Sente Tech, the technology company of the Sente Group, is also here with us. So we are happy to be here and we are always happy to associate with this university and we will pledge to continue associating with this university. And thank you very much all the organizers uh, who, invited, who invited us here tonight. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Fabian Kasi. And yes, I have been recognizing everybody except myself and other colleagues. So this is where we lie. Those who I haven't recognized, here we are. So, and this I have to read because I had to prepare it. It's not an easy one. <clears throat> In accordance of everyone we may have missed out in our elaborate protocol. I, the master of ceremony, with great humility, would at this point in time wish to accord all our alumni gathered here tonight the privilege of showing their pride and joy could their decade of gracing this great hill. So without further ado, ladies and gentlemen, and in chronological order, I now invite the following generations. 1922 to 1931. <laughs> they, they have to, I have to shout louder just in case even the hearing is impaired. 1922 to 1931. They need a week to stand. I don't know whether the week is W-E-A-K or W-E-K. Whichever it is, I'm getting closer to those present. 1932 to 1941. <laughs> ah. We agreed we have to be a bit honest. Eh? 1942 to 1951. Professor Kidia, you know these ones? 1942 to 1951. And we are meaning those who were here as students, not whose parents worked here like... Okay. Just before independence, 1952 to 1961. No, the mortality rate cannot be this... So it's true what they say that every day an omnibus people die of malaria. Or... Nineteen sixty two to nineteen seventy one. Ah. One, two, three, four. None at the back. Your sight could still be pretty good. <laughs> okay. They were four. How about 1972 to 1981? One only. Oh, the accountant general former. Hey, even you, Professor Nawang. So... Then why didn't you say this in your speech? In this decade, the chancellor at that time conferred upon himself a doctor of laws here in 1976. You were here. <laughs> That's besides the script, ladies and gentlemen. All right. Now, you know, 
around that time there was a bush war. So, the following, please stand if you completed, not you came and then went to finish a bush war and then didn't read. Uh -uh. 1982 to 1991. Uh -huh. So, we also know those who forfeited a clarion call to join the bush to save this country. For them, they preferred the comfort and sausages at Makere and Maram. <laughs> Thank you very much. Aha. 1992 to 2001. Ladies and gentlemen, I also wish to say that this is the decade in which mature entry was also introduced. <laughs> so some of them look harder than the 1922 group, <laughs> but they were here as mature entrants. Oh, we tell you. <laughs> uh -huh. Have I missed the decade? Two thousand. Oh, the previous one, I should have been in that group. Amy Alao, that was my group. I've seen some of you that we used to visit, that used to visit us. Let me stop here and concentrate on what brought me. 2002 to 2011. Again, take note of the word mature entry. <laughs> Wow, wow, the numbers increase. There is someone who has not yet stood up. I'm reading the last category. If you don't stand up, I'm going to expose you. <laughs> and feel free, Bambi, to stand up twice. Because I belong to two generations. I returned 10 years later to do a master's. And I returned 11 years after the master's to do another master's. So we have those. Aha. Uh -huh. So, the ones who have come tonight with beeps and pacifiers in their mouths. The 2012 to 2022. <laughs> so, Basebo Nebanyabo, after all this, for a hundred years and ten decades in between. If you have not been recognized tonight, who are you? What are you? <laughs> but as we are at Makere, we are ever welcoming. We thank you for coming. Please now, you stand up in your own special category. We will recognize you for what it is. Hey, aha. Professor Nawangwe, that's a prospecting student. The next academic year, she's coming in. So there are those who are coming as future students of the university. That's the category. Thank you very much. We're going to play a little game. We're trying to help digestion, although I recognize that the chancellor is tired and may need to retire. You have agreed. I thought you'd say no. <laughs> I'm trying to use reverse psychology to, get, to beg for permission to stay longer. I have a kitty of gifts. All of you gave to Makere in one way or another. Even those who didn't, at least you gave the example of not having given anything to the university. That also we recognize. But tonight, the university is going to attempt to give back to you more than it gave you. I didn't know, and I'm sure many of you didn't know what a degree was, apart from that thing we wore on the head. That's what we all knew as a degree. Then later, we started referring to a degree as a paper. I just get my paper and go. Paper, a hoodie. Tonight, the university is going to give you the following. If you excel and pass my simple exam, a hoodie in its real sense of the word, 
a travel mug, even those who don't travel. A cape, especially for those like me, whose head has grown through the hair. Or better still, those who pay half price at the barber shop. For those of you who have keys to your houses but have no key holders, tonight could be the night you win yourself that. So later on as we proceed, I will at random just ask a question to anyone. And if you answer it rightly, you take any of those gifts. I've been standing at the front, so I recognize from the demographic of my questions that this entire front row is disqualified now. We set the rules as we do, not so. So all of you are disqualified, the ones here at the front. So the ones at the back, prepare yourselves. Why are you disqualified? Because before I get to you, I have been asked to ask this incredible lady in one minute to tell us her fondest memory at Macquarie University. And it doesn't have to be a, a happy one. It's just the fondest. And if the perpetuators are here, it's a sad one. We give them am uh, amnesty. At least they made you a stronger woman. Thank you. One minute. Wow. Macquarie University. I think that will have to be love. I fell in love for the very first time here. And um, those are the days I thought, oh, my novels had told me that when you fall in love, you can't fall in love again. Because I fell in love, I got a heartbreak, and I thought it wouldn't happen again. But this is the same place where I received the proposal for the man who I've been married to for the last 32 years. Yeah. Emma Kerere Lumbox, oh yeah. That tells you the quality of her husband. <laughs> Many of you prefer to get your degrees from here and return to the villages to get subservient wives who had no education because you preferred to be the bully in the crawl and act chauvinistic, even when that was not taught you at the university. But for her, she found her love here. So, sir, you are in the Private Sector Foundation but you pride yourself for having been at Makere. Your fondest memory in a minute. Has was falling in love. You better not fall again in love. And if it's the same, we won't be sure. This time we'll ask you who it was. Simon, you are a bully. And I've been taking water, but I'm already dizzy. Um, okay, my fondest memories of Makere University, I am told, were when I walked through those gates in 1972. I was a four-year-old boy, or five thereabout, and uh, my favorite uncle brought me to his hall of residence in Africa, no, Livingstone. <laughs> I told you I drank water, so don't take it. It was clean water. Anyhow, um, I spent the night there, and he tells me many years later that uh, I drew a big map of Africa on his bed, because uh, as a four-year-old, I think I let loose. Uh, but many years later, I came to a great hall called Micho. Micho, eh? I'm still looking for my fondest memories, but um, the minute is over. But when I joined Makere in 1990, I came as a, a student, but I left with hundreds of friends. I left with great networks that have made my life much easier. I will walk into any institution in this country, 
any embassy where Uganda is accredited, and I'll find an alumnus of Makere University. And so beyond their graduation, beyond the academic times, I think I made great friendships, which made great networks, which have made my work much easier. Thank you. Thank you, Stephen, for those uh, great memories. We asked for the fondest memory. You gave us memories. Instructions, instructions, instructions. Now let me turn my attention to people at the back because I intend to ask a lady, and it must be. All of them are shying away from my eye. This one particularly caught mine. Your fondest memory at Makere University. And we appreciate that there is more water, Stephen, being served at the back. You don't want to know the color of that water. But try. <laughs> One minute. Um, my fondest memory will be the friends I made. And yeah, I guess that's it. <laughs> I don't like being caught off guard. <laughs> exactly. Catching you off guard. So the last lady from this side of town will be you, Dr. Sabrina. Your fondest memory at Makere, even though we know you haven't left quite. Uh, thank you, Simon. Lumbok Soye. Lumbok Soye. So at Lumbok, we used to make short, thick lines when we were lining up for food. And Simon, when you told us the waiter has to come and pick us, I was a little bit troubled because we were rallying up all the Lumboxers here to go and make short, thick lines. My fondest memory is I met the love of my life 30 years ago. So that's all I'll say. Thank you. At where we two say everyone is going to meet the love of their life here, you better stop the session and it's become a singer session. But even me, I have a love story to tell about Makere. The love of my life, I am told, was at Makere while I was here. Frankly, I never saw her at all. If I did, she didn't register like anything I would have fancied then. So I'm wondering how some of you fell in love with people, how they look when they're at this university. <laughs> have you seen your university pictures, people? How emaciated and terribly haggard you looked? And you fell in love with each other in that state? Come on. What's with your tastes and preferences? Have you heard I'm not of that generation? That said, ladies and gentlemen, and without taking you through a lot of trouble, I will not ask a question to give something away. I always prefer to be a little biased in my selection of recipients of awards I have. There's a gentleman over there in a bow tie. Stand up, please. There. Uh -huh, you're smiling radiantly. Yes. You're looking at me, I'm looking at stand up. Aha. Bananga, it pays to dress in a bow tie at a dinner. <laughs> so you win yourself a travel mug to keep you company as you move to the next dinner. Don't forget the bow tie. <laughs> ah. There is a lady ferociously complaining at the back and considering that this place is not known not to have strikes. I, some, the way she's complaining, she must have been a strike leader. So, madam, you complained, you caught my eye, I saw you stand up. I, don't, I can't describe your hairstyle, otherwise I could scandalize you. Oh, I know you, that's Dominica. Stand up. Dominica, you revolted typically of you. Those are the people that we know that come from Makere. They express themselves with the dissatisfaction that it requires when they feel hurt. They are not docile. So, Dominica, it's important that you, at least next time when you are revolting, you hide your identity. So, I'm going to give you a hoodie. So, that next time you want to revolt, you put it on and hide only the police should recognize you. It is exactly 9 o'clock by my time, and that's the time I was told the event should end, whether the 
main speaker has spoken or not. So I think we all right. Sing the national anthem in reverse order. Today, Eka. Not so. Pardon? No, like seriously. I was told at 9 o'clock, Simon closed the event. And a moment after that, you're on your own. This is Makeri. Ah, very good. Even Vigas at the Guild Canteen never ended on time. They ended early in the morning. Professor Maggie Chigozi, you're the chair of the Endowment Fund, and we saw your presentation earlier. We know that you are high on matters technology. You are always a step ahead of your generation. You knew that you had a podium moment and a speech to present, but you chose that technology will do it for you. But since we are a generation in transition, Makere insists that we must see you in your full high definition. Forget about black and white TV look. Come, step forward, say hello, and then. With that, you will invite the closing speech from Professor Ezra Suruma, the Chancellor of Makere University. As a declaimer, they told me as you clap for her, that if I invite Professor Suruma, he will not make the closing remark because I'm not qualified enough to invite him for that. So I chose Dr. Magis Josie. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. All protocol observed. I think uh, Lona did it so well. We will just agree with you. Uh, but you still didn't cover everyone. There are so many important people in this room uh, that we are truly honored celebrating Makerere at 100 with all of you. So yes, Makerere, oh yeah. Ah, uh, Afrostone, where are you? I, I must say I spent one year in Mary Stewart, so Loombox, Loombox, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so you already heard about the Makerere Endowment Fund. Uh, it was established by the University Council and to mobilize funds and gifts from alumni and friends of Makerere, which is all of you, which is all of you. I myself, to share a little bit, graduated in 1976 uh, in med as a medical doctor, and uh, I have very many fond memories. For me, I think it was the sports. I traveled all over the world representing my university. Yes, I went to Nairobi, I went to the World University Games in, in, uh, in Russia, I went to the Africa University Games in Ghana, I went to Egypt, went to China, I went, I went everywhere. And I really owe that to the sports department of Makerere University. I was, as you heard, in the brand. Okay, thank you. Um, in the brand new Africa Hall, and that's why really I'm so keen and I want to thank Council for having given me this opportunity. It was beautiful. Makerere was beautiful in my time. The halls were brand new, you know, the, everything was working. So we understand at this point in time there are so many students, so many more students. We also can see that because we want everyone who has an opportunity to come to Makerere, you cannot just raise the fees, uh, you know, although I'm sure there would be enough people to pay. But you can't do that because you've got to be fair. So we need to raise funds, and that's why the endowment fund is in place. We were put in place late last year, took over from Mr. Martin, Dr. Martin Alike's board. I have very strong 
members, thank you very much, Lorna. I think I'll take the opportunity just to show you who is going to be looking after this money. You need to trust us, right? We are going to look after it. So I do have uh, Miss, those who stayed on the board, the last board and are with us still again, Mr. Martin Nawini. You know him, Jomo Investment and Trustee Services. He understands money. I also have Mr. Barnabas Tumusinguzi, the legal. I think Barnabas is not around. Uh, we do have um, the, the DVC, Mr. Omar Kakembo, did a PhD public affairs here before going off to uh, another university. Um, so he brings in the aspects from the university. He helps us to understand what is happening and explains and also how we can benefit as the fund and partner closely with the university. We are very honored that we have the DVC, Mr. Omar Kakembo. Um, Kenneth Mugambe, I think you all know him, in the Ministry of Finance and an economist, and also William, uh, William is, is uh, also from the Ministry of Finance. And lastly, a, a businesswoman like me, uh, Jennifer Mujuke. Um, so with this, with this team supported by, from the planning department, Mr. Chita Amerika Emanuel, we are ready to look after your money. What did we do immediately? We began to work on our strategic plan. We were appointed towards the end of last year. Well, our strategic plan is just about ready. Uh, we've started off with a souvenir shop. Please buy some souvenirs. Contribute to the endowment fund. I know some of you got a free hoodie from, one of you got a free hoodie from, from our master ceremonies, but they're lovely hoodies. Go and have a look at them. Very nice things over there. So the souvenir shop is now working. It is in the CFT building on the ground floor. Eventually it's coming back to the ivory tower. So we will be in the ivory tower um, with very nice products. There are watches. There's, go and have a look. Go and have a look. Um, we've also done a need survey. We've talked to all the college principals and others. We know what Makerere needs, and we are out to be able to fund it. Whatever is not good enough, whatever needs uh, renovation, new buildings, we are ready to raise the funds from all kinds of sources. And lastly, we've worked on a soft an app, Mac Advance system, that will allow you to be able to um, follow your money, follow your money, follow your fellow alumni. So what do you need to do uh, to get onto this? Please visit www.endowmentmacacug.ac.ug. We need you to register your details. Those of you, actually all of you, the emails were not there in some of our, in our time. The, you know, we, we don't have addresses. We may have your name, but we need you to go to the database and update your, the, your information. So we can talk to you, so you can talk to your friends. Everyone can find you on our app. And you can follow any donation that you have made. You heard of legacy building, legacy projects from the, the, the chair of council. Those are something that you can contribute to. Government has contributed to the, to the main hall, but it will require more money. So we are fundraising for that as well, plus all the legacy programs, uh, projects that you talked about. Scholarships, we do have poor students that come in, are able maybe to pay for the first term, and then are not able to continue. And these, the, the, the academia will identify them and we can contribute to scholarships. Need to contribute to research. Professor Nawangwe told us about the wonderful things. I'm so excited about the one that keeps babies safe from an, you know, an HIV mother does not transmit. And that was done in Makerere. You know, we really do some great work. 
Yes, thank you. <laughs> but there are so many others. Professor talked about a few of them, but I know we have great seeds for agriculture, all kinds of, of wonderful things that have come out of, of, of Makerere. Makerere needs infrastructure. This is the water, the electricity that I left here. We need to be able to upgrade it for our children and future generations. So infrastructure, Makere has a lot of land, has land in various places. We need to make it productive. And that is another area that we'll look at. And guest houses. So how will you find out? We'll have these projects online. You can say, I am giving in $1, $10, whatever you're giving in, 10,000 shillings, and I want it to go to this. You'll be able to choose on the app. It'll give you that possibility. If you don't have any choice, just give it to us and we shall decide for you. And there's the guest house over here. We need it you know, to be made much bigger. So you will receive immediately pay and receive a real-time payment notification. So your money will, be, will respond to you. We welcome all alumni and friends and parents, anyone who would like to to contribute to this. So I think uh, I will stop there. We will launch the app on the 26th. Professor Nawangwe will launch the app on the 26th. And any time after that, go to www.endowmentmakerere.sug and uh, fill in your details so that we have proper contact with you we do have a database of over 300,000, yes, but it doesn't have the details, doesn't have proper details. We want that from you, and then we'll be able to communicate with you, we'll be able to brief you, you'll get newsletters, and at the same time, you can tell us whatever it is you want to tell us. So we thank you very much. We promise we're going to be accountable. We are going to be, you know, uh, proactive. We are targeting all your friends, so you know your friends. Please tell them about the, this. Tell them about the endowment fund. My granddaughter should find this university and your granddaughter the way we found it and be able to benefit from whatever Makere gives to, to young people here. I thank you very much for listening to me. It is my honor to invite, he used to be my boss, I better tell you this, uh, my boss in Minister of Finance, but also our banker, thank you so much, when we, you know, as Pepsi Cola, we were banking and uh, he was the bank manager. Uh, so Professor Ezra Suruma, we are so honored that you accepted to give the guest speech tonight and um, I welcome you here. His daughter is also, his wife is also my, my daughter. Yes, very proud of that. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Maggie Kigozi, if I may call you that. She's one of the best people we have in Uganda. I really, really, really love her. And my wife, I think, doesn't mind. Yeah. <laughs> um, your Excellencies, uh, the Executive Director of you, Kampara, uh, City of Authority, my friend and colleague, uh, Doris uh, Saka. I'm very pleased to see you. Always pleased to see you. We work together in Prime Minister's Delivery Unit for many years. You really helped me. The Deputy Mayor, um, the Vice Chancellor and the ex Vice Chancellors who, who are here, I recognize your presence, especially on this historic occasion. 
um, the chairperson council and your great husband. It's because of him that I can speak and still have be able to eat and have dinner, otherwise I wouldn't come. Thank you very much. It's a pleasure to see you uh, today. And may I, in that same tune, recognize my predecessor, uh, Professor Honorable Monica Gonyera. I'm so glad to see you, together with our former council chairman, Dr. Etienne. I'm so pleased to see you guys looking young. Very, it makes me feel good that when I stop being chancellor, I may also look good. So it gives me hope. Um, the uh, the uh, deputy vice chancellors, um, members of university management, um, I already recognize the chairman, the chairperson of the Makere Endowment Fund, um, our partners and sponsors for the Makere at 100 celebrations, our gallant alumni for whom we are here. Thank you very much for being here. Our students, distinguished guests, and my dear wife, last but not least, my dear wife. It's a great uh, joy to, to be here this evening. Um, I, I'm speaking off the cuff, so please don't quote me because this is not official. Um, 100 years of, of Makerere as an institution is a challenge to everyone in this room. Those who have gone before us and kept the institution together, moving, alive. If we were to attempt to count the institutions which have come and gone since 1922, we we'll probably get a PhD or two attempting to do that. I'm sure there are very many. So the challenge that I see is what can we learn from not only survival but actually growth in strength and capacity of this institution because we don't have many such institutions. Many have come and have gone because of political reasons, because of colonial reasons and neo-colonial reasons, and imperialism and corruption and war. So many reasons can be given for failing. But we have to recognize, brothers and sisters, that we can't go very far without institutions. I'm so glad that we have institutions like uh, Rural Centenary here. I salute the people in Rural Centenary. They are doing a great job. As you know, I have some strong views about financial institutions. And I'm glad that some of these institutions are growing and surviving. But one challenge I want to specifically mention tonight is that uh, we have, uh, I saw Innocent from UNDP, he's still around? Yeah. Uh, UNDP, uh, thank you very much, Innocent. Uh, UNDP and, and others, we've worked together to get some funding to do what we call a lab on, on parish development model here at Makerere. And I hope that 
it can be a test in institution building for our country, for the whole of Uganda. From 10,594 parishes where our people live, as I speak, some of them are starving. Some of them do not have access to medical care or they go to hospitals that don't work, institutions that don't work. When we were in the Prime Minister's office, uh, Dorothy and I, we were attempting to improve service delivery in hospitals and in primary schools because half of our pupils in UP schools fail literacy and numeracy after six years of education. So you can have institutions that don't work. So I see, I hope that I'm, 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 uh, I'll not be misunderstood to challenge uh, Makerere to use this opportunity to show its relevance and its capacity to reach the people of Uganda so that the knowledge that we, we have and the research that we are doing to increase knowledge can go down to the ordinary citizen, whether it's an adult, whether it's a child, whether it's able or disabled, that there are beginning to be institutions within reach in the parish where the child can go and learn to read and write. These are not, this is not theory. This is reality. We can't be too proud that we are producing knowledge and yet half the children who are in primary school cannot read or write. There is some, something is wrong. And we have a challenge as the highest and best institution of learning in Uganda and perhaps in Africa to lead in showing the way of how we can create institutions, methods of work that are tested over time and produce results that satisfy the needs of people. That's how I would understand an institution. Not a haphazard way of doing work. This year, Suruma is in charge of the delivery unit. He leaves and everything crumbles and someone else comes and starts afresh. That's, that's way of work has to end. And all of us, our knowledge, the degrees that we give you have meaning only in so far as we impact the livelihoods of our people and other people where we find ourselves. And that means institutions. Yes, it could be a, a clinic that, that you are running, it could be a circle. It could be a business, an enterprise. But as long as it serves the needs of the people, they will support it and it will grow and grow and our country will become better as a result. So as we celebrate 100 years of Makerere University, personally I see a challenge of recognizing the, 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 this institution as an example to copy or to emulate so that we have more institutions throughout our country because we need them and we need them desperately. You, you only need to go to, to take some bit of time out Try and visit a hospital in an upcountry district 
at 10 o'clock, 11 o'clock, only the, the security man is there. And the patients are waiting, and there's no one to serve them. And, and, and you say, but what are we teaching? And finally, I, I'm not supposed to be speaking formally today, I, I'm, but the problem of unemployment, because we are graduating a large number of students, we have many other universities now, and we have vice chancellors here, and I think that uh, we need to emerge from colonial and your colonial methods of work and ideologies and, and look for a synthesis with other economic ideologies because if China can raise 700 million people out of poverty, what excuse do you have for not raising 45 million people out of poverty? Why can't you open your eyes and learn? I know it's a struggle, I know it's hard, but it is possible with a bit of, of, of programming, with a bit of planning, with a bit of institutionalizing our processes, we can do it. Our children don't have to go to Saudi Arabia and, and Qatar and Dubai to have their organs taken out. We can do better and we must do better. So I, I have been pushing for these stakeholders' consultative process to come here to McKinney I'd like to challenge every department, whether you're in medicine, you're in agriculture, you're in engineering, civil engineering, or in power, you have relevance to the well-being of our people throughout the country. I, I have refused to accept the challenge that a country which is so poor and in need of products and services cannot employ its people to provide those goods and services. I mean, what kind of paradox is this? It's like there is water here in Lake Victoria. I live 100 meters away and I'm crying of thirst that I, can't, I don't have water. What's the problem? Someone would say, if I was in Egypt or or in Algeria, it would be understandable. But now, of course, you see what's happening with the famine. And we have 18% of our country's water. So I think that uh, I know there are many excuses for our failure. There are many excuses. Let me mention that uh, the idea that government will do everything or is responsible for everything is highly misplaced. It is we, in our private capacities, to solve these problems. I think that uh, there are various schools of thought on this. One school of thought thinks government should solve everything. Another school of thought thinks government is just a waste of people's money and to the people solve their problems. We need to find a middle ground. The truth is probably somewhere in between. The government has a role, but you and I as private practitioners also have a role. And the idea that government will solve everything is an illusion that we need to stop uh, bowing to. So, as we celebrate 100 years, looking ahead, to a time, I hope, it won't take a hundred years for us to say that every Ugandan has access to food and decent shelter and clothing and education and health. I hope it won't take a hundred years. And I'm glad that Makere is concentrating on research, new knowledge, to solve these problems, not just to have citations in academic journals, but to solve these problems on the ground. And I hope that uh, because we all come from one parish or another, 
I hope that every student will get an assignment to go and solve a problem in his or her parish as a condition for getting a degree. This is, this, uh, I did a course in, in, at Columbia University on in education. I was studying computing in education. And they taught me the one type of study of, of, of education is photocopying. You memorize everything in a book and you reproduce it and you get a degree. And you say you are educated. You because you are a good photocopier. That's not education. We don't want photocopying. You must solve problems. Because there are many and they are overwhelming us. We must change our attitude towards education so that we produce problems all of us and we improve the state of this country. <laughs> then our pride as an institution will become even greater. So let me not get carried away. But we thank God that we are 100 years old. And I believe that we have many centuries ahead. But I want to see and I hope that we will have uh, decades of, of successful innovation, of applied knowledge, and of a country in which every citizen is, has access to the basic needs of life. But for me to sit here and enjoy dinner when I know what's going on in Karamoja does not make me very comfortable and should not make you comfortable. The challenge is there, but God willing, we are going to fight and meet that challenge. God bless you and thank you very much. And that was a speech made off cuff without any preparation, not written down, but perhaps from both the heart and mind. So now the question is, if you had written it officially and prepared adequately for it, how long would we have been here? And how sore would our hands be from clapping for you? Thank you, Professor Dr. Ezra Suruma, the Chancellor of the University of Makere University. Indeed, you spoke like a vice, like a chancellor. I do not want to bastardize your speech by paraphrasing it in any way or making summaries for those who were engaged in other things other than paying great attention to you. But I must say, you put to us a challenge. And the one where you said every university student should be challenged to go and solve a problem back at their parish. I found a challenge in that challenge. And we're not going to have a debate, but I'm just going to say, Professor, something is amiss. Many of us here don't even know which parishes we come from. Some parishes don't have a single student at this university. And many of you who have attained the greatest accolades of your academic life have chosen to reward this university by taking your children to other places, sadly not to this university, to even universities outside Uganda that have a less pedigree than Makere University to do terrible courses there and you call that love for Makere University. Let us be honest, like I said, be honest about what you did at Makere and also be honest at what you are doing against Makere. Like the show off that is now trending where we parents that are endowed better than our parents were taking our children away from Makere, as opposed to bring them to Makere. But also, Professor Nawangwe, someone once told me that people don't leave jobs. They leave bad bosses.
People don't leave universities so ignore them. They possibly ignore bad management at those universities. Will you then be that good management that parents feel proud to entrust with their children to build them for the future? I know many times MCs are asked to come and make people laugh. That's normally their number one terms of reference. It becomes difficult when an MC comes and makes a point worth clapping for. So I see the pain in you wanting to clap for me, but you can't. <laughs> so I will then leave it at that and recognize the following. Professor Dr. Suruma, you did mention of the relationship that UNDP has struck with the university. It would be a shame on my part if I don't recognize the country representative of UNDP and her deputy, Elsie Atafua, the resident representative, and your deputy, Shira Ngatia. Welcome to Makere. Welcome to the great Makere, and thank you for that incredible contribution towards making Makere even greater than it ever was. So my final act for the night, ladies and gentlemen, is to make a dance presentation to you. Are you ready for it? Are you ready for it? I won't take challenges, but I want you to learn to love what I am going to do now. I have heard in a local language, some people say, Tambula ngo Muganda. So likewise tonight, let me walk like a gallant Macarian. You mentioned and shared your memories. Let me also tell you mine. I was admitted here for two courses simultaneously in the year 2000. I only knew of one admission because I had failed to get my course of choice after the weighing of points. I intended to come here to join the School of Medicine. And I missed human medicine by one point. Yes. And in total disgust, I applied for social sciences evening, which I was granted. And so I reported here to study social sciences in the evening. As you may well be aware, there wasn't enough room at the School of Social Science to accommodate all of us, especially of the evening class. So we used to study on Saturdays as well. But because I was working, I barely attended any Saturday classes. One Saturday, I came, and I was told the classes are held at the faculty of VET. I didn't know where VET was. So I found my way almost out of the university to look for vet faculty. And I found it. Panting, hoping that the lecture hasn't gone way past the middle of the lecture. Lo and behold, the lecture hadn't even started. So my colleagues were marooning outside looking at the notes boards and talking to beautiful lad lasses and lads in there. I took a moment to look at the notes board. Guess what? My name was on the admission list for veterinary medicine. <laughs> that was my second choice. But what was even more intriguing was my designated hall of residence. Anyone can take a guess? Uh-huh. North Court, uh-huh. Take a guess, take a guess. I was a what? A goat. <laughs> I don't know what it was about me and being given what doesn't surely look like me, but I was designated to Livingstone Hall. <laughs> that was one month plus into the course. I ran quickly to the Dean of Students' office the next Monday, if for nothing, to reclaim my place in Livingstone and start renting out my space. But I wasn't interested in veterinary medicine. After all, I'm not known not to love my chicken 
goat and cow meat. So I didn't intend to eat my patients. I was told that I was way past the what they called it. Exchange window for changing courses and halls and everything. So according to one system of the university, I did not report. On the other, I had reported and doing an evening course. And that is my story at Makere University. What is yours? When you go back home, share it with your loved ones. Without further ado, I request that we now stretch ourselves, congratulate each other for staying the course, of being here all evening, of fellowshipping with our friends. It's no time to get down to the informalities. Show is over. See you at the 200th celebration. God bless you.
zani we bwana asila zani ni we baba wataka kuni wabure bwana wataka kuni wabure bwana yule si wako na misi wangu echukia nini kati yangu mimi na wewe chukia nini kati yangu mimi na wewe